Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy. It is April 20th, YC125, and this is the Eve Universe Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I apologize for cutting off this music early. Uh, it was one of those things where, like, I came down and, and, and the right click button hit, and it just so happened to be, like, over the Eve Universe open, and then by that point, it had already started, and if I flipped back, it would have just restarted the song, and I was like, ah, uh, let's just go. So it's fine. We're here now. This is where we're at. This is where we're going to be. Welcome to Thursday. Cheerio. I've got my coffee. Whew. I feel like I say this a lot, but it's been a, it's been a chaotic uh, day so far. Um, I have a couple of things prepared. Although now that I think about it, I need to go look up one more thing. So we have a new Eden news. We have some, uh, we have the Alliance tournament announcement. And we have, uh, some, well, some shipcaster update in relationship to the new Eden news. Look at that product placement. I know, right? Mmm, mmm. What a wonderful shirt and mug. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, yeah. All right, so uh, let's start with... Oh, hey, that somehow worked. Oh, I see what's going on here. Let's do it this way. Aha, see? My stuff just magically works from last time. All right, so uh, let's see here. What we see is that the Kaldari and the Galente continue to uh, work their way up. It looks like the, Cal the Galente in the last few days has gotten a bit more of their energy back. Uh, back when there was the other two spikes, which I don't think we can make this go back more than that. Uh, but when there was the two spikes, including the 10% spike, we were just over 14% behind them. And now we are 17% behind them. So they, they continue to be climbing pretty good. Uh, and But we have started climbing as well with the Glente. You can see that the Amar have taken another step and the Glente have make, made a few smaller ones. So um, it looks like, you know, as we go forward... The Galente have kind of fallen behind on, on, on the ones that they're keeping up with, but at the same time, the Galente have now acquired 70 point, 71%. Um, what's interesting, though, is with the new Eden News, as we're going to read, now the Kaldari side is spawning both data cores. And that's important for a few reasons. Um, but, and we'll t I guess I'll t touch on this more uh, when we get there, but the short of it is, I feel like this is a pretty significant buff for the Kaldari and a pretty significant nerf for the Mimitar and Amar uh, in particular, which I find very odd given like the current setup. <coughs> All right. I know it was very abrupt. You were vi I was vibing too, man. I was vibing too. Hold on. Why is my throat suddenly all like messed up? One second. Ironically enough, I blame this also on the music not finishing up because I usually like sing along for the end of the of the wrecking machine as a way of warming up my throat since sometimes I haven't talked in a little bit. Uh, but cut it off, so didn't get that. Went straight into talking. All right. The point of the matter is, is that uh, the Kaldari are getting ever closer towards completion. Um... And I think that that's, as we get closer to completion, I wonder how that's going to impact the overall um, market of things, right? Because as the Kaldari get to the end, 
on the one hand, there's probably going to be somebody who's going to try to buy out the end. Once the Caldari finish, they're going to have to build do the manufacturing side. They can no longer do this side. Uh, but the Glente will still need it, but otherwise they'll be completely useless to anybody. So I expect to see the market be... The market has already been pretty volatile, but uh, it should be pretty crazy now. We should maybe even go look at what it's at, but maybe not right now. All right. Um, the reason here... Let's just look at the patch notes. Hold on. Um. Oh, one thing that isn't in the patch notes is that they're shutting down Eve Anywhere. Which I find really disappointing. I really wish that they had given a better explanation for that. Uh, I know that it was more or less an experiment, but, you know, they, when they expanded it outwards, I thought that that was a pretty good sign. So to have them just axe it like that, I wonder what it, I, I, I just, I, I wonder what caused it, you know? It really seems like one of those things that's probably a fairly significant cost, uh, all things considered to have available. Like, at the time, they were working on how their session tokens and all that stuff worked. So it made sense to be like, oh, well, we can do this as a web client now. Or, you know, we can do this as this, uh, on this, not a web client, but a, a streamable client now. Um, but beyond a proof of concept, it's expensive unless it's going to be significantly value-added. And perhaps they determined that it wasn't enough value-added. Um, at any rate, so what we got here is the Kaldari State's Shadow War research effort is advancing rapidly, and the state has reached a major breakthrough in their understanding and mastery of the stellar transmuter technology thanks to the efforts of loyal capsuleers. As a result, Kaldari hacking, courier, and laboratory sites will now contain a small amount of stellar transmuter data core blueprints and components as loot in addition to the existing transport relay data core loot. So this is weird to me. <coughs> uh... X up in chat if you've been running the Kaldari side since this patch notes. And let me know, do you feel like you've been getting additional loot? Or do you feel like some of the loot has now become Stellar Transmuters? Because my experience, I did three sites and I got nine or something like that data cores worth, which is about what I expected. But half, exactly half, or no, eight, of my, eight, of, eight data cores. And exactly half of them were stellar transmuters. It, it, okay, see, which ones were you doing? Also, uh, okay, so if it's additional loot, which size were you doing? Because I would love to be wrong. Like what, uh, yeah, what, which one of the three sites were you getting additional loot from? Because I was doing the hacking site. Okay. All right, oh, oh never mind. Voice, voice from God says, uh, Ashtarothi was just bad, uh, you know, unlucky that day. Stop, stop spreading bad information. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's really weird then, because I, like I said, I just went out and I ran three or four sites and I had exact, or three sites and I had exactly 50-50. I hadn't gotten a chance to go do it more yet. Thank you. <coughs> uh Updated the Galente Align text in the UI, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the reason why I say that this is a nerf to Amar, well, I guess it's not necessarily a nerf to Amar Mimitar anymore. If it, it, That was based on my idea that it was 50-50. If, if it is, you're getting the exact same amount, and now you just also get stellar transmitters on top of that, um, then obviously it's not a nerf, but it is a buff for the Kaldari either way. Uh, it's definitely a buff for the Galente, too, because the Galente can use them both. But the problem with this is that what it does is it makes it so that stellar transmuters are even more common, uh, even though they're already the least, uh, like, the lesser of the two in demand, as the Kaldari are getting ready to finish. Um, and now the Kaldari can even finish, th in theory, by farming their own sites. Because they can farm Kaldari sites for the transmitter ones and then just sell 
the more valuable transmuter ones. I don't know if anybody's going to do that, obviously. But that is what the result of this is. Now, <clears throat> do I think this is a uh, finger on the scale or anything like that? Absolutely not. This is a logical development, right? Uh, the Kaldari have crossed the threshold of 60%. We're going to have to see what happens if anybody else crosses the threshold of 60%, or maybe even 50% now that the Glenthe are there, um, and, and see how common this is. But they have said that as this progresses, they will start to spawn in more than one place, and that is the natural result of it, is that they're only going to become more and more and more common. This is why the people that ask, like, well, is it going to be po what, you know, is this going to be able to be failed? Well, yes and no. I mean, at a certain point, there's going to be more data cores in existence than are needed to complete the task. Um, and at that point, you either turn them in for your loot or don't get anything for them. So, you know, I, chances are this is only going to start to, to accelerate from here. <sighs> um, okay. So... And then re remove the respawn cooldown of observatory flashpoint sites in Pochfin and accelerator flashpoint sites in Edencom Fortress systems. They will now respawn immediately after being completed. Woo! Hold on a second, actually. Now, now that I think about it, I want to look something up real quick. To discuss this, I kind of want to look something up. Hold on. Uh... Actually, I could just do it through here, but whatever. Where is Eve Economic Reports? Do we have a good payout graph? Uh, Triglavian invasions. Here we go. So this graph here, this chart right here, hold on. <laughs> we can see it's Triglavian invasions, CRP. Um, CRP means corporate reward payout. So this is exclusively for people going in to trip uh, pro eating com sites. No, because that would also include. Uh, no, no, no. This is this is Triglavians going in. This is both Triglavians and eating com people running sites. But pro eating com people are paid less because they're also paid in LP. So that's, that's not the point. Either way, what we see here, this giant fall off, basically we saw this increasing farming of the dread sites and then uh, and seagulling. It was a whole drama llama thing. And then when they made the change to make it so that they can't spawn in the same, like all the time, they, had, they put, added a pretty significant cooldown to it. You see this massive fall off, right? And then a little while later, they gave a little bit of the cooldown. They lowered the cooldown. And boop, we see this tick back up, right, of, of how much money is made. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what they've done is they've now reverted it to be the same way as it was way back up here when it was all the way at the top. Now, uh, what I find interesting here is the use of... Um, Really? The use of the, the little shaky hands, because let me tell you, this is a great example of, you know, what's what's great for one person is bad for another, right? Like, uh, we got Flea Ar Harvey Oswald in here, which is uh, Drake uh, Eidolon, Eidolon, I think, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, who also, karmically speaking, almost lost his marshal, but didn't, uh, this, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before. Um, Apparently, he was one of the main people pushing for this. I know that several of the pro Triglavian groups, like the Kybernauts, are rather upset by this because effectively, 
what this does is this is the incentive that gets Nullsec to come in into Pochfin and farm the crap out of it. Now, on the plus side, that means that Pochfin's more active. There are people doing things in it, in theory, right? This is the this is the good spin. Hold on. You know, there's more things, therefore there's more conflict, right? Conflict is good. If it's, you know, you didn't make Pochvin more interesting, you just made it so that Pochvin isn't interesting enough for the null blocks, so they left. Um, the pessimistic side says that the only people that run this is a bunch of botting or multi-boxing Ishtars that cheese the system, and this is just, this is going to ruin small gang PvP for Pochfin, right? Those are kind of the two arguments that I've heard. Um, I, I do ask the question, I did ask the question in the forums, and I don't believe I've gotten an answer yet. The question that I want to know is, like, if we take it all as true, that all this will mean is botting Ishtars, what about botting Ishtars makes Pochfin worse for small gang PvP? Like, even if you assume that all of the sites are going to be run by them, well, if the solution is to remove the sites, then, like, what's the difference? Just ignore the Ishtars, and the rest of the systems work the same. Now, obviously, there's a flaw in that argument. Um... I so, oh, hold on. Let me see if I can find the forum post. You're right. Calling it calling it botting is probably not great, but I was saying like even under their their premise of like worst case scenario. No, yeah, I yeah they use the word bot. That's why I did here. So there's a thread, Pochfin, Clarity on Change to the Observatory Flashpoints, right? That was made a little while ago. Well, it was resurrected when this last change happened. Um, and there's this guy that says, well, it turned out that any time above zero is useless to save Pochfin, nothing else but bot Ishtar fleets in Pochfin now. It used to be a very good place for middle scale fleet to fight, and you guys just ruin it. So I was just, I was taking that argument on surface level and just being like, well, Okay, what about that makes Pochfin hostile to other people? Is it their gate camps? Is it, you know, whatever? Like, that is what I, wanna, I want no, to know more about. Um, his argument was in favor of, of, the, of, it, of its removal? I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh. Wait. I don't think so. That's okay. Well, that's pretty funny. Okay, uh, hmm. Yeah, you know what, um, Drake, let's, let's chat tomorrow. And maybe, the thing is, is that I also want to hear, definitely want to hear from the other side. Like, you know, your side is very clear, in my opinion. All right, either way, let's move on for now. The point is, is that this is very controversial. I, I do want to say, by the way, overall, m my only actual official reaction to this is all this does is continue to expose the fact that the sites are reversed. The fact that the site that the pro-Triglavians want to run are in... Uh, are in Pochvin... And the pro e the side that the pro Edencom wants to run is in Edencom systems is doesn't make any sense. Edencom people should have to go into Pochvin 
to run their sites. And likewise, Kybernauts would have to raid home systems to run their sites. The fact that they can just lock down Pochfin and then just farm it for themselves is the thing that every other problem that these sites has stemmed from. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Announcing the Alliance Tournament. Tournament, uh, what is that? 19? 19. It's that time again. Rally your best fighters, analysis, and crafters of spreadsheets. And spreadsheets enjoyers on the path of the 19th tournament is around the corner. Uh, Poshfin has so many problems, but yeah, that is one of them. Now show my Marshall eating dirt. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, send me a DM of it, if you haven't already, right now. And then I'll pull it up. Uh... Nullsec players don't care about allegiance to either Triglavians or Edencom, though. Nullsec players would just farm the Edencom side of things and would be the same. Except, uh, except the eating the site itself would be pro Triglavian, which would mean that the denizens could go into the sites to defend their own, you know, Triglavian allies against the incursion as opposed to both competing for the same resource. That's the big difference. Uh, all right. Alliances will once again be sending up to ten, uh, 10 of their most versed combatants to uh, fight it out in the arena of glory and epic prizes. They'll broadcast the rest of the cluster and their teams, the EVE community, cheering on for glory. Yes, yes, yes. I love the Alliance Tournament. It's my... Uh, it's, a, it's a big event every year, or almost every year. Uh, it was gone for a little while, but CCP uh, Aurora brought it back and, like, was so, so successfully so. It's just how she kind of moved from a community manager to developer in the first place, uh, which has been awesome. And then furthermore... Uh, Today's announcement will primarily ha highlight the key dates. It'll also be a summarized in bullet point fashion, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, hey, there we go. It's a trailer. Hold on. Let me make sure the sound is on. Oh, yeah, we saw this. Warriors of Legend. <laughs> Hallowed and venerated among the stars themselves. For those bold enough to join this gladiator's pantheon, this gallery of champions, there is only one rule that matters. Winner stays on. Winner stays on. So this is interesting. Um, now, coming this August means that uh, the Alliance Tournament is going to be a little bit earlier than normal. Normally, the Alliance Tournament comes in September or October. Uh, it happening in August is really interesting. Usually the summer's a pretty quiet time. I am very much in favor of this as far as the reschedulings go. Um, I know that, like, Fan Fest has been moved to the uh, fall. So, like, for having all of their official stuff happening within, like, two or three months might seem pretty compact, although August isn't that far away. But, you know, I, I feel like this is a good opportunity to kind of get over the, the, the lullest part of summer. So uh, that'll be cool. In addition to that, I know that, like, our guys got really excited right away with the Galente background. Spoons noticed right away. Speaking of Spoons, hey, Aiko Arazu, uh, that this is a Galente background. And I believe that we can now confirm. Uh, where is it? Just a small selection of the prize. We'll be happy to share. Uh, th this year's prize ships will be variations on the Drestia and Udu. Um, these will be slight variations to the past prize ships so that to preserve the uniqueness of the originals. 
but we will show you what these will look like along with their associated stats closer to the main event in separate pl prize blog. Consequently, this means that this year's sponsor is the Galente. Yay! Which is what we were asking for. All right. The format of the Alliance Tournament this year will be the same as what we all know and love. Double in elimination 10v10 team battles. Hey, Samuel. <clears throat> the rules for the event are being refreshed again uh, to ensure the tournament remains diverse. This is true. They basically change the rules, at least in a few ways every year. Uh, during last year's tournament, we introduced a unique format for Trials of the Tournament. This year, however... Oh, there we go. Uh, we are making a few changes in relationship to the entry process to the tournament. Wilt there will be sports spots reserved for the top four alliances that finished last year. The remaining 28 slots will be earned through the feeders tournament this year with no teams earning entry via silent bid auction. This also means that they'll be increasing the entry entry cost slightly from 2,500 plex to 3,000 plex. The details of the feeder tournament format and draws will be shared on 23rd of May, 2023. So keep an eye out. Hey, Ganai 07. Thank you for that gifted sub. Uh, Hey, and it went to Tesla One Coil. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good night. Um, yeah, and smash that like button. Exactly. All right. Um, so that's really interesting. This means a couple of things. First of all, this means that nobody can like buy their way into the tournament per se this year. But more importantly, so like one of the things is is that coverage of the events. And the production of the event has always been kind of the straining point, right? Because these things are a total production. And a lot of things have to go right, both technically, personally, logistically, in order to make all this stuff work. So by expanding the feeders, I, in my eternal optimism, would like to think that this means that they are more confident in their ability to televise more feeders right um with more people going through the feeders there's going to have to be more fights more rounds possibly more weekends so uh that could be really cool i also um i wonder what's going to happen if there's more than 20 30 uh 28 alliances that are willing to pay 3000 plex then i don't know how that works uh, the IGC thanks the Mimitar for their sponsorship in the last tournament. We will be adjusting their revised point values with making the new Galente ships cost a little more favorable. The new Na Navy faction ships released to the public this year have been added. In addition, a few Triglavian ships has had their points reduced. Scripted sense. I, I think this is a good. I think this is good because like the thing is, is that a lot of the things that make Triglavians good aren't really applicable in. Uh, the Alliance Tournament. In in particular, their ability to spider tank. 500 plex is a slight adjustment. I mean, you know. Scripted sensor dampeners and weapon disruption will remain. I mean, I hate to say this, but, you know, a year ago, uh, $15 to $20, you know, that's, that's a smaller difference than that. Uh... Scripted sensor dampeners and weapon disruption will remain. However, only ships that have a whole bonus that is applicable to those effects will be able to equip those modules. In other words, Mollus carries Velator, Celestis, Lachesis, and Arazu for sensor dampeners, and Pilgrim, Arbitrator, Emperor, Emperor, Sentinel Curse, Crucifier, and Crucifier Navy for weapon disruption. Well, that's a big one. That's a huge change. I think. Isn't it? That's a big change. You can look forward to a full list of the changes um, and point values being released on 25th of April. If you're interested in recruiting for your alliance or team to fly with, we recommend checking out Looking for Team Channel. That's right, because they now allow mercenaries. So on the 20th of April, which is today, preseason begins, 25th of April... So in five days, we should get the sign-up started. And then they go for, until the 9th of May when they're closed. Then a whole bunch of stuff happens. Oh, yeah, Feeder Weekend 1 and 2. And then Weekend 1, and then Alliance Tournament Weekend 1 and 2. 
There you go. Yeah. Well, I, maybe it was uh, one of those, like, you know, sarcastic slights. <laughs> Other community tournament organizers have reached out to advise that there are plans for open series to run prior to the feeders tournament. Yep. Awesome. <clears throat> Rules are starting to look coherent after many years of uh, free-for-all. Yeah. But I think that uh, the Alliance tournament has kind of gone through that transition quite a bit, kind of over the last decade. You know, uh where what used to be kind of like almost like a celebration of the craziest ways that you can get through it you know we we start to see things like limiting tinker fit, fits and link, link, uh, limiting other kinds of strategies um in attempt to try to like break up and and sh shake up the meta and i think that that's a pretty cool idea especially since like it's not necessarily permanent right like there's no better way to shake up the meta than to disrupt the thing that's being the apex predator within that meta, right? I think that that's a pretty clear one. Anywho, <coughs> uh, excuse me. I think that's it for that. Which means we can get in with the world news, New Eden news. Yeah, it's insane. Speaking of news, did I miss or read somewhere about starter packs in the NES? Uh, there was like a sale on the starter packs. I don't know if it's still going on. There's a two for one sale on extractors and uh, uh, extractors. But I think that the other sale's done. I haven't seen, I haven't looked in, in Eve. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at that. So there's, you can now get the different starter packs in Eve, um, which is kind of interesting. So bronze starter pack which is normally bronze starter pack is usually $10 but is in fact 350 plex hold on checking to make sure that they don't have plex yeah so the bronze doesn't have plex but the platinum does hold on let's look at the difference so this is 150,000 skill points 30 days of omega time uh, three months of omega time Half a million skill points. Uh, the the Blade Racer skin, Ferox Navy issue, Steel Cardinal skin, Expert Cerebral Booster, Radioactive Reclamation skin, Reclamation Suit, Myrmidon Navy issue skin, Skill Extractor, blah, 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 Reclamation Suit. For 2,145 Plex, which is four months of game time, so $80. Okay, so for this pack, it's ninety nine, you know, a hundred dollars, and but it comes with fifteen hundred plex, which is like sixty dollars by itself, and two MCT certificates. I see MCT certificates. Hold on. Yeah, two. Has all of the same stuff. Yep, it has all the same stuff minus the 1500 plex for 2145 plex. 
Likewise, the gold one. Really? Does that mean you can buy it again? I have no idea. The the silver one is 20 bucks versus 650 plex. So a little bit more worth of plex. And the silver does not come with plex. And then the gold does come with plex, and it's a thousand, which is or 940, which is like 60. So yeah, I mean, they, it looks like they just kind of subtracted the Plex from the value. And it's still a better value to buy it from with cash than from Plex. But now you could, in theory, buy them with Plex. That's pretty cool. I like that. Hold on, people are yelling. Okay. Oh, you can buy them again. Interesting. Uh, you don't, yes, you don't need most of this to play. You just, you, uh, you don't even need Omega, technically. But yeah. Most of that stuff, <clears throat> I mean, if you like the skins, then that's great. Otherwise, you can sell the skins for ISK. All right. Are you ready? Kaldari State significantly advancing stellar transmuter understanding in technology shadow war. New, New Kaldari, the Forge. The Kaldari State efforts to achieve an understanding of the stellar transmuter technology are reported to have made significant strides in recent weeks, with major progress made due to Capsuleers loyal to the state acquiring and submitting large quantities of research data. State Chairman Akimaka Soraki praised the efforts of Loyalist Capsuleers in, quote, the, in the finest traditions. Really? No, I'm not muted, but I'm not showing the screen. Neat. I'll start over. Akimaka Soraki. That's, he's the, uh, he's the chairman of the CEP, he's the CEP, uh, chairman. So he's basically effectively in charge of the Kaldari. What will happen if a faction is unable to finish the event? I mean, again, I'm not even sure if that's even, like, theoretically possible, because it may not end until that somebody does. But at the same time, um, uh, they don't get a shipcaster? Kaldari State, okay. <clears throat> Kaldari State significantly advancing stellar transmuter understanding and technology shadow war. New Kaldari, the Forge. The Kaldari State's effort to achieve understanding in the stellar transmuter technology are reported to have made significant strides in recent weeks, with major progress made due to Capsuleers loyal to the state acquiring and submitting large quantities of research data. State Chairman Akimaka Soraki praised the efforts of loyalist Capsuleers in, quote, as quote, in the finest traditions of Kaldari enterprise and ingenuity, end quote. After the chief executive panel received the latest progress briefing from Executive General Heike Torigo, the state's progress has been such that Kaldari research operations are now actively developing the finer details of stellar transmuter technology. This is likely to mean mercenaries and capsuleer groups active in the so-called shadow war raiding state facilities will gain materials valuable for making progress in this research field. While the state progress has been considerable, the Federation's capsuleers have been advancing Galente research efforts into both stellar transmuter and transport relay technology in a broad effort to catch up with the other empires. Against the background of ongoing militia warfare, the reluctance by some capsuleers to raid former allies or new friends, the Amara Mimitar efforts to obtain access to transport relay technology has been steady, but somewhat slower. Competition among the three empires and fewer opportunities for acquiring research data given the present Kaldari state monopoly has also reduced the rate of transport relay technology research for the Federation, Empire, and Republic. Uneasy peace holding on Intaki Prime as assembly elections loom. Intaki, placid. Despite continuing protests against the Federation military presence and isolated incidents of violence, 
The situation on Intaki Prime has been largely peaceful for several weeks, undercutting the arguments of those who advocated delaying the upcoming elections for the Intaki Assembly. System-wide ballots for the assemblies are due to be held in the first week of May, with the heavily populated Intaki homeworld electing the, their vast majority of seats. While the Intaki Assembly is, is the system government for Intaki, it in, in practice, it primarily functions as the planetary government of Intaki Prime. The other planets of the Intaki system are considered semi-autonomous territories within the assembly representation, while the system's space administration falls under the federal franchise system, with the assembly formally designated as the sovereign franchisor. The Galente Federation's invasion and self-declared liberation of Intaki and ten neighboring Placid Region systems has placed the status of the federal franchise in, in Intaki in the wider Viret constellation in serious questions. This, the Intaki Autonomous Movement charges that Federation Navy occupation of the Intaki system has breached the treaties under which the system joined and maintained its membership in the Glente Federation. The Autonomous played a leading role in the mass protest that convulsed Intaki Prime for many days while opposing the armed struggle declared by the Free Intaki Army. For its part, the Free Intaki Army has declared a ceasefire for the election period and endorsed the Intaki Lamkata Political Party, a nationalist group connected to the radical sect of the Ida faith. Intaki Lamkata is led by Siaka Idama, a spiritual figure who has spent much of her lo long career preaching that the Intaki will only be secured and free to pursue sh spiritual rebirth and liberation if they are unshackled from the Glente Federation. With the Intaki Autonomous led by the charismatic yet pr pragmatic jo Jonas Ivestara, the ruling moderate faction of the chief counselor Vera Insulacio is expected to face a challenging election campaign. News in brief. 24th Imperial Crusade Militia makes stand in Korean system following Mimitar offensive into bleak lands. Republic fleet forces resume probing of Sorum fortifications in Ugidi after entire constellation secured. Feder Federal Defense Union retakes Maklaminimod as Galente fight back in Placid Region continues. State Protectorate, State Protectorate assaults Onato system as fierce fightings rages across Asoma Pocket in the Citadel. Hetman General Kenneth Filmer tours, tours transport relay research facility as Mimitar maintained lead in tech acquisition. Vice Admiral Foriana Ravelli holds talk with Intaki Chief Counselor Vera Insulacio on assembly election security. Captain Marshal Zerdan Sirkosh hosts Sadar Marshal Sosan Fayez as Khanid military delegation visits Mehator system. Executive General Heike Thorago to return to Anaman as Kaldari HQ fleet allocations and Navy station construction continues. Garissa's pirates carry out simultaneous raids on Quaif facilities, reportedly storing nanoparticle-infused drinks in 2P-TAC-4LS. Reports claim sightings of Angel C Cartel's Rafik Zohar leading assault on Amatar fleet research base on Kamal 9. Intaki Assembly Military sees billions isk shipments of illegal drugs and boosters in raid on Serpentis Base on Intaki 3. KK's Home Guard fights off Sanchez Nation raiding parties along Tashmurkan forces in multiple engagements in, engagements in Sanar's constellation. So, okay, let's start at the top. Uh, I mean, this is pretty simple, like I said earlier, uh, before re doing the reading. The Kaldari have now progressed to over 60% of the way. Uh, they had several significant boosts over the last couple of weeks. And so uh, the Kaldari have begun spawning stellar transmuter technology on top of the normal uh, relay transport technology that they have. Um, the only other thing worth noting here is that they do call out the Federation's uh, valiant efforts to catch up. Although, you know... It's been a, it's been a, it's been a slog. All right. Next, the uh, uh, so I really want to start. That's what we're going to use the list, the the second half of this stream for, is following this Intaki Prime situation out a little bit better. But more or less, the short of it for now is that you know we we continue to be working towards like a resolution of Intaki, and it really seems like the first week of May which I might remind you is Capsuleer Day is a pretty decent time for the Intaki Assembly uh, elections to happen and have that impact things in a meaningful way, right? That's the kind of thing that could create a twist in a plot, for example. Um...
And like I said, we'll look more into it. The only other thing that I, uh, jumps out at me is, so I looked into this. Uh, this name and this name are, I've never, I can't find them from any previous thing. So they kind of, it seems like they've created a new religion or new sect of, in, of the Intaki religion and a new Adama for this thread, um, which is fine. I do find it really interesting, though. So they, she has a long career, but she's using the word unshackled. And the word unshackled usually is connected to the unshackled overmind or uh, the, the, the drifters are, are in a forbidden, unshackled and forbidden dominance arrangement. So, uh, you know, like, it seems suspicious. But we, I don't know. Uh, Vera and Salasio, we've seen quite a bit of. Um, but if we look, look, we can go copy and search here. I think we can just. And here. Turns out they're, they're not there at all. So, which happens. So, yeah, that person's never been mentioned before in the in the EV universe, as far as I know. Uh, of the news in brief, uh, this is mostly reporting basic stuff from, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, most of this is just updates on what's going on, especially in Faction Warfare, but a couple of them stood out to me. So this right here, nanoparticle infused drinks, Garistus Pirates. This might be a whole nother thread to follow. We might do this another day. But um, Quaif and their connection to the Kaldari and the Garistus through uh, transneural mi microcontrollers in soft drinks, uh, potentially to affect senatorial elections in the Galente Federation, right? Um... This is this is strongly sus. Cuz if this pays off, this is a this is a long going plot. Um Let's see. Oops, sorry. No, it's going to be uh it's going to be her election. Um This is a dumb, this is a bad plan. This is a bad plan. All right, hold on. Let me look up. Let me think about how to look this up. Uh, Let's see. Victory. It's this one, right? Quaife Mega Corporation accused of using so soft drink responsive subcranial nanocontroller trial to push favored senatorial uh, Senate candidates. So, yeah. Could could be nothing. Uh, now, Rafik Zohar, I find this very interesting because, um, so this is Rafik Zohar. Rafik Zohar was the guy who did the raid on the, um, the mining ship, the, the Outer Ring Excavation, uh, rope wall that was working on the new compression technology, uh, back last year during the Guardian Gala event, right? Um, 
Now, obviously, the Guardian Gala got uh, got canceled this year because the Angel Cartel were busy with other plans. I do find it very interesting, though. Like, this is the first time we've heard of Zohar since that event. Now, just for a bit of a curiosity, yeah, just in time for assembly elections. Exactly. Also, the, there's a strong, like, the Garistas has a strong connection to the nano controllers too. Like, they've raided a whole bunch of facilities and been raided with them and their connection with Lidai, and it, it gets very conspiratorial very quickly. Um, either way, with, with Zohar, uh, there is one thing I was kind of interested about, which is that, like, what is the likelihood that Zohar is connected to uh, Mithra's Gate? And the answer is very little chance. Because, and, and my evidence is based on his name. So the traditional Angel Cartel characters uh, and names use a lot of, like, Hebrew nomenclature. Um, whereas the Mithra's Gate people use Zoranastrian names a couple of times. And Zohar means... Uh, it means splendor or radiance in Hebrew. So this just seems like a new military commander by the angels that they've introduced, but then haven't really used. Um, now, of the people that they introduced at that time, you know, we were able to, you know, after this is when we got uh, Esri Hokazutsu and Leopold and Valari, uh, and both of them can have locator agents used on them. But last I checked, this guy doesn't exist for you to be able to hunt for. So I don't know where they're going with this guy. I do also feel like there's an interesting note where his weapon system is called out. He really does feel like the kind of character that will show up when you're about to show off a, a shooter, for example. You know? Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is that well, I guess he's he's attacking the Amatar fleet research base on Kamal 9. I don't know if that's um, relevant per se. I know the angels obviously attack all over the place. Um, but yeah. And then... So here's an interesting connection as well. And we'll look at this as we go through the history of Intaki. Um... Intaki Assembly sees billions of ISK shipments of illegal drugs and boosters and raid on Serpentis base on Intaki 3. So this connection between the Intaki and the Serpentis is something to keep an eye on. Uh, and then this, the KK, which is a Kaldari group, fighting off Sanchez Nation raiding parties alongside Tashmurkon. This makes total sense because there's a, take, there's a KK sis, uh, station in that system. So... Or within that constellation. So it makes sense. And that's it for the New Eden News for April 18th, YC125. I've been Ashrathi, the voice of New Eden. And until next time, I'll see you in space. I haven't had to do those in a while. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's look at... Uh... No, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Let's look at... Um... So, <laughs> I still love the wave. Good. So let's go back to February 10th, YC 124. So this would be February 10th, 2022. Okay? So... Just over two years, just over a year and two months ago. Uh, this is when, as a matter of fact, this very Zohar raided the Upwell Consortium's place and stole the Roquel class ORS Esperance. Um, And it's also where Commander Zohar was introduced. Now, let me just go on a limb here, all right? 
CCP, it feels to me that sometimes CCP um, breadcrumbs things. In other words, they reference something not necessarily because it itself is important, but its name comes up, like is associated with something else in the past, right? So this is a perfect example. We are looking into the Intaki situation, like the current Intaki situation, and, and I picked up this one as the very first uh, like place to start with with this, because it starts with Federation and State in high-level talks with Concord over security situation in Placid and Verd Vendor, rumors of peacekeeping treaty. So this, to me, was the first step in the whole Intaki uh, uh, political situation that's going on now. Right. And if you go up, the entire video or the entire episode or, you know, uh, article is about the hijacking, including Zohar. So if one was to go look at this article, the article from today, and you're trying to figure things out and you search for Zohar because you're trying to figure out things. you get this article, which points you directly to, like, Intaki stuff. Like, that, that exact time... Well, this, actually, this is the next one. But, you know, so the Intaki situation was being set up at exactly the same time that Zohar was doing stuff. So I don't know if this is a way of CCP, like, signaling, hey, by the way, so Zohar is still out there, even though he wasn't able to make an appearance for the... Um, uh, for the Guardian's Gala, uh, or just a way of getting us to look at this particular article, or both. But either way, let's look at this. Like I said, at this point, they're in, uh, there's there's a talks about a peacekeeping treaty. Now, the problem is, is that, like, we keep going back and forth and rating and re-rating and taking and retaking um, the uh, Intaki system, and this is causing more and more problems in that area. So now there's talking going on about if we can uh if we can have a peace treaty that allows us to kind of protect Intaki from the worst of this chaos. Then uh let's see the eighteenth this is on the tenth, so a week later or so, we get more information, including uh the conclusion of Zohar stuff, but also um, Celis Agard backs the Concord peacekeeping uh, uh, initiative in the Caldari Galente militia war zone. So this seems positive. Let's see. Was there anything else in this one? Oh, new, and then Galente Senate delegation on New Caldari Prime tours reconstructed Chief Executive Spire Pinnacle with Chairman Akimaka Saraki. So there's a Galente Senate delegation that's over there to do these peace treaty stuff uh, uh, and, and tour the facilities, okay? Then, uh, the next month, 315, we get the end of the event and... We, the, we're seeing the very first, like, echoes of the Edencom stuff from the Othanun system, I think. Um, and then we see President Celis Agard and Chairman Aki Makasaraki agree protocol for suppression of anti-human subversion and militia war zones. So they're, they're continuing to make better and better agreements. Security and sovereignty of Intaki Prime guaranteed by new agreement between Galente Federation and Caldari State. This is amazing, Right. Right? And then Serpentis Corporation accused of complicity in ma massive smuggling of drugs, illegal cyberware, and armaments to Caldari Galente war zone. <sighs> Galente Senate delegation tour of New Caldari Prime culminating in trade and finance cooperation summit in Landfall City. Intaki Assembly resumes negotiations with federal administration over security and shipping franchises in the Intaki system. Everything's going really well. 
Uh, then uh, Malti Shakur is confirmed once again as Samatar. This is now April 6th. Um, yeah, the Galente militia forces have continued their own month-long counteroffensive against Caldari forces to regain control much of Federation territory that had fallen under state protectorate control. Federal Defense Union has continued to push Caldari occupiers out of the Placid and Verge Vendor regions. In addition, the situation in the Caldari Galente war zones remain highly chaotic on the ground, with many Federation colonies remaining under the control of Caldari state units and affiliated mercenary companies. The Antaki system continues to be held by the state protectorate, but the Antaki Assembly, Planetary Defense Units, or Territorial Army have continued to maintain a secure hold on Antaki Prime. Corporate corporations, security forces have rather concentrated on so-called acid reclamation operations on planets with less developed defenses or where fully occupied by the state protector and affiliated sources. So, you know, obviously, you know, big deal. In the face of the Federal Defense Union's counteroffensive, a steady stream of Kaldari corporate mercenary vessels have been evacuating and retreating from systems and planets previously occupied by state forces. Federation, federal Senate delegation visiting Kaldari Corps territory, currently fish, finishing its tour with the final rounds of talks aboard Jita 44 Trade Hub Station, has issued a com communique protesting uh, the piratical looting carried out by Kaldari mercenaries in some corporate security offices. Uh, da, 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 the Chief Executive Panel and Federal Administration has not commented on the situation beyond pro forma statements deploring any excesses and condemning pirate activity on the fringes of militia conflict. Reports from the militia. Uh, from the war zone indicates that the notorious Special Department of Internal Investigations and Federal Security, or Black Eagles, has arrived in force on a number of planets and recently liberated systems. Blah, blah, blah. Kirk and Risk Control and Algento Corps mercenary groups, etc. Federal Senate, Senate delegation ends tour of Caldari State on, on GDA 44 Trade Hub with talks on interstellar customs and trade regulations. Uh, deny systematic looting. Serpentis Corporation accused of uh, sponsoring inebriate cult assassinations in recent spate of uh, murders of, of, and terrorism in Syndicate, Solitude, and Placid. Well, that's really interesting. So Serpentis has connections with the inebriate cult. Um, Yeah, and then we have the egg hunt, right? Kaldari state sources report major security breach detected by Navy and state security agencies. Massive spy hunt said to be underway across Kaldari state with focus on 4-4 Trade Hub. Multiple civilian zones locked down across G-4-4 and military docks flooded with Navy Marines. So uh, this, this peace talk has been shattered by this spy occurrence. Mass capsule hijacked by Garissa's infiltrators in Gita 44. So, um, you know, this is Esra Hakazosu. Development groups. Sources um, have informed. She was stole a whole bunch of information about the Kaldari stuff um, in relationship to their dreadnoughts. There was a Phoenix. They called it Operation Phoenix, I think it was. It, it was pretty straightforward. Hold on. What are we doing today? We're looking at some of the lore behind the Intaki situation as it seems to be coming to a pretty significant head next week or within a couple of weeks, I guess, in the first week of May, which makes it a pretty good indicator that it might be a big piece of the twists that come with the uh, Capsuleer Day. At any rate, Esri Hakazosu has a bunch of reports where she talks about this guy named Peacock. Peacock um, is her contact um, that she's supposed to report to. That We've been over this quite a few times, but suffice it to say, she's reporting to Peacock, and then things go bad, right? She gets found out, and then they they all scatter, right? Okay. Where were we? So then later on, during that time, they determined that... As of Esri Hakuzosu's movements in the period before the exposure and dramatic escape of her espionage ring have unearthed a visual record showing her visiting a popular Jita 4 tac 4 social venue. Hakuzosu is seen at the Pulse Bar, apparently meeting an as yet unidentified man. State counterintelligence is believed to be pursuing this lead. Okay. 
hold on one more thing real quick um wait is this the one ah okay sorry Oh, well, whatever. Um, as this was happening, I can't find, I, I might not, uh, yeah, here we go. Federal Senate delegation escorted to border by Caldari Navy forces amidst increased Garestis threat. So as, um, as all this is going down, that Senate delegation is escorted out, right? Then it turns out that that contact, the Peacock, as we know him, of infiltrators and spies named. within the Kaldari state. An investigation by Kaldari counterintelligence has identified a man meeting with Ezri Hakuzosu days prior to her defection as Leopold N. Valari, a Galente diplomat attached to the federal consulate on the Jita Fortac 4 trade hub. Leopold N. Valari appears to have been assisting the Galente Senate delegation visiting the Kaldari state two months ago. One key goal of the Senate delegation's visit was to explore possible avenues of achieving a peaceful resolution of the status of the long-disputed Intaki system. Located in the contested Placid region, the war-torn system contains Intaki Prime, homeworld of the Intaki people. Extensive militia warfare over the past decade has seen the system change hands dozens of times, with periods of lengthy occupation and even planetary raiding by Kaldari forces. The Senate visit had ended just as the Garista's spy ring was exposed, and Leopold N. Valari is reported to have returned to the Federation with the Galente delegation. The Kaldari state's chairman, Akima Kasaraki, is known to have been in direct communication with President Celis Agard of the Galente Federation as diplomats on both sides scramble to swiftly resolve this sudden crisis. The Galente Federation firmly denies any involvement in the infiltration of state military and research agencies by Garista spies, but this development has already set back discussions on the future of the Intaki system, causing alarm on Intaki Prime. Federal authorities are refusing to confirm or deny reports that Envalari has subsequently disappeared. The Kaldari state has added Leopold Envalari to their most wanted list, ignoring Galente protests at listing a federal diplomat as a wanted criminal. The scope will report as the situation develops. This is Alton Havari reporting for the scope. Now, <clears throat> Leopold Envalari ends up disappearing out into the great wildlands where he hangs out until just recently where he visited Valor and then headed over to um, help out with some negotiations, which hopefully we'll get to that. All right. So uh, from there, we enter into the, uh, the fan fest happens. The death list shows up and talks to everybody. Um, Federal Senate Subcommittee on Caldari Galente Relations opens investigation in missing diplomat Leopold and Valari. Yeah, Inur, thank you. Um, Intaki Assembly debates mobilization of Intaki Prime Reserve Militia as diplomatic crisis sends shockwave through population. Um, President Celis Agar chairs Federal Security Council meeting on diplomatic crisis with Kaldari State. Anna Knobel and Sekel mercenaries moving to secure illegal assets and provide security for criminals, according to Concord reports. Um... Where is... Maybe it's not in this one. So then... The next thing that happens is like... So as this is ramping up, right? So this diplomatic situation, they're building up towards peace, and then it all collapses. It all falls apart. Envelari gets away. And there's a lot of tension now within the system. But before anyone could even respond to that, the, the structure in Othanun decloaks. So let's look at this. This is during the Federation Day um, of last year. So 620 YC-124. We see... Um, this 
this is when the Amar build their Triglavian, uh, their, their, their structures around the Triglavian harvester that they start researching, so that way they can build their own. Um, the Edencom station in Othanun begins to decloak, and so that takes kind of front stage when it comes to the Caldari Galente situation. But here we see alleged Grissa spy and missing Galente diplomat Leopold and Valari has reportedly been traced to the MTAC MD3B system in Great Wildlands. Wanted by the Caldari State for espionage, trackers have been able to narrow down, narrow down in Valari's movement to the system using liquid router network data analysis. A precise location has not been obtained. Speculation includes the theory that Valari was sought refuge with Krulifer organization, a Thucker crime syndicate allied with the notorious Seckle clan, and rumored to be a proxy for Republic Security Service's deniable operations, smuggling, and illicit funding, uh, funding channels. The presumed presence of the fugitive Galente diplomat under the wing of the Thucker criminals have also increasingly increased speculation to the role of the underworld fixer and smuggler mastermind the Deathless and the Grissus spy ring in the Calvary State. While a Valgarissus agent, Esri Hakazosu, is confirmed to have rejoined with the Fold and Venal, the apparent reluctance of Envalari to join her suggests to many that he was the uh, triple agent working for the Deathless Network. Now, I have other videos where I talked about this, but the short of it is, is that my pretty strong suspicion is that Envalari is also the Senate... Um, uh, this, the, he, he's the insider for the Deathless that managed to steal the FIO dossier on the Serpentis Capital buildup to give it to the Deathless, who then got it to Upwell, which triggered all of that stuff back in like 2018, I think it was. So, um, yeah. And we see like lots and lots of uh, stuff involving the Othanun situation. Then we see um, mo yeah, we, we see the, the mobilization of all the militaries to go after Othanun, or at least the Galente and the Caldari militaries, and increased uh, Triglavian activity there. Um, And then it says, Federation Navy Vice Admiral Ferenna Ravelli reported to establish command post in Osmodin system. That's probably not related to that. But um, one thing that's worth noting is that both Othanun and um, Intaki are both within the Placid region. So when we see Placid region, it's worth being suspicious about, especially given what we know eventually happens, right? So... Um, Federation Navy refuses to comment on reports of orders to remove renegade Caldari. Oh, that's different. That's Othanun. Um. Yeah, I guess not that much here. For the next one, diplomatic. Oh, yeah. So the, when the first transmitter gets turned on, and inner bus starts to fall apart. Federation Senate, no, 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 that's, a, a Federation Senate condemns the Amar Empire and Caldari State for gross acts of militarism and imperialism in the war zone. That's kind of funny. Um, Federation Navy issues general notice to, here we go. Federa Federation Navy issues general notice to civilian orbital infrastructure in Placid Region to prepare for inspections and military expropriations. So this is one of those things that kind of, we we missed its potential long-term importance because we had our eye on Othanun, right? Othanun is in the Placid region, but again, so is Intaki, and so are all of the constellations that were taken by uh, the Galente at the Uprising event. So um, this could very well have been when that started to happen. Military expropriations means that they're taking civilian equipment and they're turning it into military. Basically, one could suggest that a lot of what has happened in the last, uh, you know, within the author or within those constellations has been a military expropriation. Oh, seven, good eye. Um, so. 
Serpentis accused of smuggling massive amounts of military grade performance and being boosted into Placid by Galente Police Directorate. Eh. Um. So then, Caldari State completes gate construction. So this is when the gates get constructed. Uh, they successfully connect um, uh, Samanuni to uh, Athanun. Now, at this point, the Galente could have still constructed there. So it says the Galente Federation has also accelerated its industrial efforts in the Mignon system location of the Stargate that is understood to be paired with the Galente Gate under construction in Athanun. Uh, yeah. Are the cease hostilities between Galente and Amar explained as, of, as for current? Yes. They, yeah. It's mostly, honestly, the Galente and Amar uh, ceasefire is more reactionary as the Galente, as the Mimitar and Amar, or sorry, the Mimitar and the Kaldari agreements basically makes it so the Amar and the Galente both basically uh, could theoretically be hostile. Like, it makes everything very messy. And then combine that with the fact that the Mimitar really didn't like the imperial nature of the taking of Intaki meant that the Mimitar really turned against the Galente. So the Galente made at least some trade peace agreements with the Amar uh, so as to not be on the back foot from the Kaldari Mimitar um, ceasefire or whatever treaty. S support for Eden Con proposals. I, I did a whole episode where we went over that. I think I've edited that down and put it out. I'll have to check. Um, All right. Um, governors and planetary assemblies raise concerns with president and senate over federation navy's infrastructure appropriations in war zone regions. Kind of interesting. Uh, Federation Senate Defense Committee hearing presses Vice Admiral Fernando uh, Ravelli over naval strategy and plastic war zone. That's just because uh, we were losing. <laughs> um, I think that's it for this one. So then uh, the escalating tension. So this is October 20th. Where is it? Buildup of Federation Navy forces described as vital to national defense by Vice Admiral Ravelli. And this national defense argument is what's made when they do the invasion. So by this point, I think it's pretty simple, uh, cl clear to claim that the Galente were definitely ramping up for this, for their invasion. Um... Was there anything here? It really starts to slow down and get quieter um, because everything's top, every all of the focus is on the transmuters and on the um, Othanun campaign. Uh, Federation Navy describes fleets in the Mignon as a counterbalance to aggressive moves from the Caldari State, which is really funny because previously it said, um, where did it say this? That. We were just looking at it. We were just looking at it. Boo! The Caldari earlier had claimed that they're building up because of us. Or was it? Ah, no. Yeah. Caldari State Naval Forces continue to arrive in Semenuni to match Galente build up in a Mignon. But then we, uh, the Galente claim that, uh, in fact, we're just trying to match them.
Smuggling networks of Garissa's pirates, Angel Cartel, and Deathless groups carry refugees to safety and truce agreement. That's probably worth noting. <laughs> and then... When Othanoon blows up... Or, sorry, when uh, Turner blows up... I think that that's... Yeah. We get President Celis Agard convenes joint session of Federation Security Council and Military Commission. And that should lead us to... Yeah. So all of that leads to massive sinusoidal activity detected in Placid. Hold on, let me close some of these so that way we can go back. We can keep looking. Placid region, the large-scale sinusoidal beacons activity. So this was... Actually, let me just show the video. Coming to terms with the catastrophe in the system of Turner, with so devastation and the of Turner's what everybody has estimates of fatalities are reported to be in the millions, with complete loss of life on Turner. Evidence 1. points to the catastrophic failure of the Amar built stellar transmuter, sparking condemnation across New Eden. Further increase in tensions between the Mimitar Republic and the Mar Empire are now at breaking point, witnessed by a sharp escalation of skirmishes. Diplomatic negotiations between both sides have all but collapsed. Casting live with shocking scenes of Federation ships invading Intaki and neighboring systems, this is a major developing situation amidst the current turmoil in New Eden. My fellow citizens, the time has come for the Federation to rise and liberate Intaki to recover what is ours. These worlds and the people of the Kaldari State are being slaughtered in this outrageous invasion. We stand ready to confront any aggression against the state, and the combined military of the mid Mitar Republic will repay our enemies in kind for this mass murder, for it is the sacred obligation of every subject of Holy Amar to reclaim the stars and rise up for your empire. Cool. All right. So uh, Intaki becomes invaded. They take the system and uh, the neighboring constellations. Uh, let's see. The Galente Federation Navy has launched a massive invasion of the Intaki system and a number of surrounding systems in the Placid region, according to multiple reports from local sources. Uh, communication with planetary, civilian planetary and space installation authorities are heavily dis disrupted. The, state, the situation on Intaki Prime is unclear, but the planet was under the control of the local Intaki Assembly and its planetary militia prior to these dramatic events. There are reports from Luminaire that President Celis Agard is preparing to address the Galente Federation. So, um, one thing that's worth pointing out, as the guy says, you know, that this is against the charter of how the Intaki joined um, the Federation, that's actually true. Um, oh, right. Sorry. Earlier, you couldn't understand me while the video was happening. I, I just said that they had all of our attention on the Athenoon situation. Like, we didn't see, we, like, we got blindsided by Intaki. Um, anywho, um, uh, um, now my brain has died. Oh, well. So, the idea is, is that, like, Fuck, where was I even going with any of this? Either way, we're just going to go to the uh, the speech by President Sailor Sagard. 
Um, oh, right. Um, the charter. When the Intaki joined, they explicitly joined with the agreement that they would be able to be independent. Hold on. I wonder if it says it here. Oh, right, 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 right. Hold on. Uh, no, I can't find it. There was, there was a whole thing about, like, when the Intaki got into their charter. Uh... Yeah, I can't find it. But the the Intaki's charter basically said that um the the Treaty of Inta like when Intaki joined the Federation, they did so with the understanding that they would maintain a certain amount of autonomy, right? Basically what Celis Agar did did in fact directly violate the agreement that got the Intaki to join the Galente Federation in the first place, uh, from my understanding. Whatever happened to the Turner One guys, we don't know yet. All right, so she says... My fellow citizens, the time has come for the Federation to rise and liberate Intaki to recover what is ours. These worlds and the people of Intaki, the wider Verret constellation, and the Fislipins constellation has been under the threat of Kaldari state occupation and ruthless exploitation by a system of authoritarian corporate rule. This state of affairs have always been intolerable to us, but our great democracy, a beacon of peace and prosperity for all, chose in the past to pursue a path of diplomacy and observance of law that has so often been cast aside by the mega corporations of the Kaldari state. We can no longer afford to continue this fo to follow this policy, preferable though it is, wise as it would be under normal circumstances. The long history of megacorporation exploitation of the Intaki in the wider Placid region is one thing. Now, though, we see the tragic event in the Turner system. We face the potential of the total devastation of Intaki and many other worlds populated by our citizens. I judge this threat far too grave to acquiesce before. With the advice of the Federal Security Council, Military Commission, and leading members of the Senate, I took the decision to act. When I was elected to this great office, when I became your president, I promised to place in the highest importance the ach on achieving peaceful coexistence with our neighbors and total and implacable resistance to those or implacable resistance to those who would destroy our way of life. Sadly, to fulfill those promises, the actions I authorize today are necessary, and if they prove insufficient, you may be assured the Federation will act again. So, uh, all of these systems became controlled by the Galente directly and taken out of the Faction Warfare Warzone, at that time, um, it was highly controversial, but as, as you can see that she's kind of citing, um, like, security, much as we saw in the build-up to this point. And in response to that, the Kaldari seizes Othanun and shuts down the ability for um, the Galente Stargate to be built but explicitly does not violate the, the Militia War Powers Act in the same sort of way that the Galente did. So now, like, Intaki is really in question, right? Like, there was already protests and everything, but now, um, like, it's under occupation. I should have had all these prepared, but I had a lot of stuff going on, so I was only prepared, being able to prepare, like, half of it. So, Federation Navy entrenches positions in the Intaki system, Verret and Fislipins constellation. I don't know if that's even correct. Intaki Assembly's permanent bureau meets with Federal Marines Commanding General on Intaki Prime. Uh, Galente Federation formally protests Kaldari capture, uh, capture of Galente Stargate, blah, blah, blah. 
FIO Special Department of Internal Investigations attaches agents to Federal Marines Unit on Taki Prime because their FIO is still investigating um, uh, Leopold, I believe. And Taki Syndicate sends delegation to ULI seeking security guarantees from Concord Direct Enforcement Department. That's an interesting development. Federation Ambassador Devin Melitate in series of meetings with Royal Air Hamaday Couture. Uh, Quaif Company issues statement urging mutual respect for territorial integrity and in interstellar law. Then Mimitar successfully shut down their Stargates. All right. Pr former President candidates Shalene Ramnev and Suvio Belleron have formally questioned the apparent militarization of the Antaki system as further infrastructure projects are being undertaken by the Federal Federation Navy following the invasion and liberation of the system. The appearance of Stargate construction and naval station projects in particular have raised fears of constant military presence. Former Arcurial Mayor and strong runner-up in the YC-122 presidential election, Shalene Ramnev has stated her unequivocal support for the removal of the Antaki system and people from a position that they should never have been in, but has expressed her concern that further military provocation by the Federation and the Antaki system will simply be a repeat cycle of conflict between Galente and... Kaldari and Antaki in another guise. Senator Suvio Belleron, representing the federal sub-district covering the city of Lenokia on Antaki Prime, has been more critical with signaling out President Salos Agard for harsh words. Now remember, Suvio Belleron has been here to call out, like, to be in the political situation since 2008. We were looking at, you know, he, his first acts were during the Empyrean Age events, which we were looking at last week. Where, were the federal senators for the Antaki system consulted before the invasion? Yes. Did we consent to the action? Yes. With some misgivings. Simply to see our people freed from constant warfare under the absurd militia system. But did we agree to a permanent federation military presence? No, we did not. Fed President Agard is quick to offer reassurances and make deals, but time and time again, we've seen that this pre federation's president will break all agreements, new or old. What basis is lasting security is that? Uh, so... And then reports of federal Marines expanding their presence beyond the control of the Kanta Yavat transorbital launch facility has also, uh, has also led protests in many sections of the Intaki di diaspora. While Intaki separatists has increased their political agitation following the invasion, the local largest protests by far have come from the Intaki autonomous advocating mi maximum Intaki independence with a looser voluntary federation. The Antaki autonomous protests have been joined from many across the Federation society, forming a core which the liberal and religious or regionalist Galente citizens have been willing to support. Okay, so that's, you know, things are getting big, but hold on. Federation Marines raid suspected Serpentis drug laboratory in the Aket Mountain Serp uh, in Taki Prime. So, Serpentis drug laboratory in the Aket Ma Mountains in Taki Prime. Another Serpentis in Taki connection. That Belleron historically a centrist and pro-fed is arguing that this goes too far as significant uh he is not pro-fed he is, so he has historically used so he used the um ba -ba -ba -ba. he used the uh the 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 killing of the dude by immolating him on stage as justification to do his first capital punishment bill uh like banning that kind of practice then he went on to try to get rid of Mentis Black and failed. And then in 2018, he came back and thanks to the uh, stuff that was going on in Shandeli, uh, especially with the Cursed Planet, he comes out and pa tries to pass a second capital punishment bill. Um, and throughout this whole time, he's had the uh, Yin Mei critic calling him out for that stuff. But he has always been kind of a political opportunist. But, I mean, he's also from Intaki, so it makes sense that he would be a troublemaker. He also, uh, back when he was doing the last um, uh, bill, he got punched in the nose by the, by the other Intaki representative. So, yeah, shoo. Uh, Intaki syndicate representatives escorted from Placid to syndicate space by DED Special Forces. Um, deadlocked by competing proposals for reforms. Intaki Space Police increases security patrols in ZTAC 6 NQ 6 constellation as station militias mobilize. Federation Navy refuses to comment on Intaki Gate construction pro progress or status of Mignon Gate. 
Obviously, the Amygdon Gate eventually got connected to Intaki. Um, Quaif Company denies conflicts of interest by exten created by extensive holdings in Syndicate region. And is this when? No. So then from there, the Kaldari take control over the Syndicate constellation of uh, DS Tech M4Q. No, yeah. Is that the same one? What? Yeah, Z6NQ6. So that's not the same one. Uh, this dramatic move appears confirmed and with the apparent agreement of the Intaki Syndicate following emergency update of the Concord Assembly's Register of Sovereignty and the request of the Intaki Syndicate's ambassador to Concord. So the, um, the Intaki Syndicate, in response to the Intaki, uh, you know, system being taken by the Glente, the Intaki Syndicate, that is not friendly necessarily with the, with the Glente per se, um, has now brought in a Kaldari detachment and allowed them into the constellation that kind of functions as the beachhead between uh, the Galente's control in uh, the war or in yeah the Galente systems and Poidot's constellation. Um, I find it weird that the Intaki Syndicate plotline hasn't moved ahead yet. I think it's all kind of wait. Well, they built up. It took them a while to build up the facilities. Next, the new rare aura was discovered. I don't think there's anything important in this one, is there? Nope. New Intaki Stargate opens. So, this is when it starts to gain its security status. It goes from point one to point two. Uh, Cell Sagar government has officially declared that low security of Intaki people's home system is a federal emergency that requires continued direct intervention. Intaki autonomous activities, a significant minority of Intaki assembly members continue to protest. So there's a significant minority of Intaki assembly members, and there is this Intaki autonomous activists continue to protest the ongoing presence in the Federation military and security forces in the system, in particular on Intaki Prime. There's been considerable disquiet on the planet in the presence of Federation Intelligence Office internal security forces and the number of counterterrorism and anti-sabotage operations by Federal Marine units. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Senator Suvio Belleron, representing the Federal Subdistrict, covering the blah, 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 has continued to be vocal in his opposition of the Intaki system policies of President Salas Agard. Senator Farron Shu, a longtime foe of Belleron, representing the Yinmei home planet of Chantelli in Lur Satin system, was notably acerbic. In comments on the apparent shift, the whole federal Senate knows that Belleron is an opportunist whose ambition is only matched by his appetite for imposing his worldview on others. We now see clearly that Belleron is happy to stamp his cultural values on anyone who isn't Intaki, but is not so keen when it comes to his grip on political power base on Intaki Prime being threatened by the sensible security policies of President Agard. Basically accusing of him like, well, look, he's willing to try to pass these bills that like, mandate his, you know, Intaki morality on everybody else. But when it comes time for the Intaki to be part of the Federation, he's just like, Arr. which, you know. Uh, federal authorities have continued to view this as an internal matter for the Intaki Syndicate, although there are reports inc of increased federal intelligence and Navy scouting operations than the wider Syndicate. <laughs> Belleron's a NIMBY. Um... Now, here's an interesting thing that also is worth noting, is that Intaki Bank, Mortis Legion, all these kinds of things are all directly connected to Or, which again, Or was the one that was attacked by Zohar, and Upwell. All these people, like, that whole cluster is all unified. And so we see this, like, just like we saw uh, in, in when we were going through the historical events and we saw those two corporations show up that were also, you know, eventually ended up in Upwell. You know, the idea that Upwell is maneuvering to do something pretty dramatic with these playing pieces is uh, pretty significant, honestly. They're, they're definitely one of the groups to keep an eye on. Um, 
Waif Company fends off increasing criticism in Galente Federation over role in syndicate and ties to the Caldari state. Garissa's pirate raids outlying Caldari Navy installations. Uh... And then that leads us to this year. So, here we have... Right. Do we have anything here? This is as we're moving towards the, the, uh, the Shadow War. Uh, no, it doesn't look like there's anything. This is mostly about the the technology at this point. So again, they're kind of drifting away from attention on Intaki. Shipcaster technology links, stellar transmitter, military HQs. Um, the Galente Federation's Office of the President issued a release in which Selesagar's administration deplores the reckless moves for their experiment with technology, blah, blah, blah. Uh, federal militarization, militarization of Intaki raises security status and blocks capsular structures. Galente Federation authorities have taken further steps to militarize the Intaki system, raising its security status and blocking the anchoring of new stru calorie structures. This is when it's become Verret Special Military District was issued on behalf of Celis Agard, Federal Military Commission and Vice Admiral Fre Freya Ravelli, Commander of the Federation Combined Special Task Force 15. Um... Yeah, so they raised it to security status point three, and they stopped um, construction of capsular stuff at the time. Celis Agard's administration continues to maintain that it's acted, acting to, quote, fully secure the Intaki system from any future threat of al Kaldari occupation while providing the bro uh, broader prosecution of efforts to fully liberate Galente systems within the militia war zone, end quote. Critics of the increasing militarization of Intaki by Federation forces allege the measures to be, as Su Senator Suvio Belleron of Intaki has put it, quote, a flagrant and ongoing breach of the essential sovereignty of the Intaki people as provided for by the federal constitution and, its principle and all principles of the Federation. Which, again, he's technically right. Uh, Senator Shu dismissing Sen Senator Belleron's position by amounting to, quote, Intaki for the Intaki and federalism for everyone else. As usual, Belleron is a central... Federalist cobbler, uh, cobbler, okay, fine. Uh, cobbler who are who for whom the shoe pinches when he has to wear it, citing reports that dissenting Intaki assembly members have been harassed, arrested, or otherwise suppressed by Federation forces. Belleron hit back. Senator Shu has made a career out of supporting authoritarianism in all the guises, whether it be Seng Do Paymasters Black Home or federal military industrial money teat. He openly sucks on while Agard looks on fondly. So, um. Yeah, they they say I don't know if it's here or whatever, but they're like, yeah, like, yeah, cons it's consented to by the Intaki Assembly, like they totally are happy with it. Um, but then it also points out that like, oh wait, remember how it said that there was only a few of them there back then? Well, now, uh, there are yeah. See, points to the consent of the Intaki Assembly, but it turns out that the Intaki Assembly. Members have been harassed, arrested, or otherwise suppressed. So, not not great. While federal senators and other politicians trade verbal blows over the controversial policy of our Intaki, many citizens continue to protest and counter-protest over the issue. A large anti-militarization rally in Lanoika, Intaki Prime, was broken up by federal Marines after a number of federal offices were allegedly vandalized by protesters. So the protests have become very active, in particular in... Um, Belleron's home city. Yeah, Celis Agard has altered the deal that Intaki should hope she doesn't alter it further. Exactly. Intaki autonomous acti uh, activists have alleged agents, provocateurs infiltrated the rally, but also have been forced to disavow the Free Intaki Army, a militant group outright calling for full independence that has claimed responsibility for a number of attacks on Federation military and intelligence offices. So we have the Free Intaki Army, 
which are a much more militant branch. Uh, Shipcaster stuff. While the Federation state increases, blah, blah, blah. The Federation registry increases security status in the Intaki system in Concord from 0.3 to 0.4. Nothing really there. And this is when the peace treaties start to be talked about between the Kaldari and the Mimitar. So the Mimitar point out to Kaldari that uh, the Amar are spying on them, and the Kaldari kind of uh, look into it and get unhappy. So Senators Kellen Anfad and Shalene, Shalene Ramnev visit in Taki Pine on fact-finding mission. So let's remember, Shalene Ramnev was the one, was the other person besides Belaron that was most outspoken against it. A Federation Senate delegation visiting Intaki Prime on a fact-finding mission is being led by Senators Kellen Ampad and Shalene Remnev, both former candidates and the president of the Galente Federation. The senatorial mission is scheduled to inspect mil the Federation military installations across Intaki Prime, but first meeting with the Executive Council of the Intaki Assembly, chaired by Chief Counselor Vera in Sal Salacio. So there we go. Vera in Salacio is the head of the Executive Council. Or Chief Counselor. There you go. Senator Ampad is a long-standing member of the Federa Federal Senate with a following in the Federation's Mimitar diaspora, although with Verrocchio artists and political activists is not universally admired across a po large population drawn from numerous tribes and clans. Senator Shelling Romnev was elected to the Senate for the subdistrict of Greater Arcura Region, Luminaire, in this year's Senate quintile elections, filling the seat that covers her old mayorally, may mayorality of the city of Arcuria and Caldari uh, Prime. So, uh, Senator Shalin Ramnev used to be in charge of Arcurio uh, and then handed over Arcurio to the Caldari when uh, the Caldari retook Caldari, uh, new, uh, you know, Caldari Prime. Um, and, but now Caldari Prime is still represented within the Federation because there's Galente people there. And so um, she now is the senator for that Subdistrict, um, which, if I remember correctly, there were some pretty bad accusations about how our carrier was being run prior to the handover. So I'm not sure where Shalene Remnev's loyalties are, but they they were one of the people that were outspoken against the action. Meanwhile, Aunt Bod isn't is a Verrocchior, so Mimitar. So we're going to have to see. Neither like they they could go either way with this. The visit to Intaki Prime by the Senate delegation has been cautiously welcomed by Suvrio Belleron, who says, I trust that my senatorial colleagues will see, be able to see the federal military has overreached badly here, and the Senate should resist the rollback of militarization in the Intaki system by President Agard's administration. Jonas Evstara, leader of the Intaki Autonomists, uh, expressed outright skepticism that the visit would bear any but the most bitter fruit given the se Senate delegation focus on uh, talking with the Federation military and the Collaborationist Executive Council. So, Intaki Autonomous is another group, not the not the new Intaki Army, or the free Intaki Army, right? Um, but also against this whole thing, protesters, and accuse uh, the Executive Council of being collaborationists, which, I mean, you know, fair, fair cop, I guess. Um... Serpentis Corporation reported to have broke territorial agreements between organized crime and smuggling networks. That's interesting. Um, and that's it for there. Then the, the spying scandal begins. Federation and tor uh, authorities register increase in Mintaki Prime sin uh, security system, system security to 0.5. Um, Senate delegation visits Kenta Yavat Transorbital Launch Facility on Taki Prime to inspect naval installations. That makes sense, especially since that's like the first place you go. That's like how you get on and off, it would seem. Um... Intaki Syndicate representatives reportedly in attendance at Kaldari Mimitar Security Conference in Arakan. That's an interesting point I didn't notice. 
Yeah, the Intaki Syndicate were at the um, the conference. And Eden Common Concord intelligence operatives expelled from the Caldari State and Mimitar Republic. That's kind of interesting, too. Intaki autonomous leader Jonas Ivestara addresses 100,000 in rally of Navit Navi Akat amidst high security presence. So... Uh, yeah, that's the leader of the Ataki Autonomists. Federal Intelligence Office accuses Intara Direct Action PMC of smuggling arms to free Intaki Army. So that's interesting because Intara Direct Action is connected to the smuggling, uh, uh, the Deathless. So this is basically saying that the Deathless is arming the free Intaki Army. Which is very interesting. Um, this is the trade agreements and stuff. Calari State Protector covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Intaki Free Army warns federal marines to stay out of free Lenoika as barricades erected in docks district and, and textile quarters. So the Free Intaki Army, which are the radicals, are trying to fortify Lenoika. And Senate delegation visits city of Lenoika during Intaki Prime Tour, accompanied by Chief Counselor Vera Insolacio. So Vera Insolacio is the chief counselor. He's the head of the executive council, which are accused of being uh, collaborators with the Senate delegation in the city that the Free Intaki Army is fortifying. Cool. Federation Intelligence Office issues security notice warning inebriate cult assassination teams present on Intaki Prime. So this is why we've kind of talked earlier about the whole Serpentis and inebriate cult thing, right? So if the Serpentis were already known for funding inebriate cult assassinations, then we can see that the Deathless and the Serpentis are basically fun fueling the fire of 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 uh, in Intaki. Serpentis Corporation produces military boosters and armaments confiscated in Navy raids in Akit Mountain villages. So once again, uh, military boosters and armaments are confiscated in the Akit Mountains on Intaki. Uh, Tucker Pra Oki Caravan Master dismisses reports of Angel Cartel and Grissus Pirates agents meeting aboard flagship. Um, that's it for that. So then, is this the one we just did? I don't think so. Right? Yeah. Um... Okay, is there anything here then? Yeah. Dem so domestic reactions differ as Federation and Empire public absorb news. Hold on, what's going on? Domestic critics of President Settles Agard has been swift to condemn what they see as a, quote, a complete abdication of our responsibilities to interstellar civilization beyond our borders, end quote, as Suvio, Senator Suvio Belleron of Intaki Prime put it during a press conference in the city of Lenoica. The Federation public appears somewhat startled by the pace of diplomatic developments, Though snap opinion polling indicates a guarded welcome for the prospect of improved relations with the MR Empire. Pro Agard Senator Farron Shu, visiting Federation Navy installations in Placid Region, responded by saying, Suvio Belleron always wants to intervene in someone else's business. No affair is too small nor too great. The proceedings of the New Rhine City Council, how the Yin May organized Shandeli, the military affairs of the MR Empire, perhaps even the expedition to the outer regions. But woe betide anyone intervening in the precious Intaki system if Suvio Belleron isn't in position to take credit somehow. This is a listing, this is kind of a reference to a lot of the previous actions of uh, that slaver apologist, Farron Shu. Oh man, this is going to get ugly. 
Um, Garissa's pirates raid on Kaldari supply base and syndicate foiled by Antaki space police reinforcements. So Antaki, so the Antaki syndicate are just fully working with the Kaldari at this point. Uh, and Quaif is up there too. Um... Clashes in Lanoika City and in Taki Prime as Federal Marines breach textile quarter barricade in pursuit of terrorists. So that fortification that was made by the uh, Free and Taki Army has now been broken into by the Federal Marines. Pretty much, I think, as the, yeah, the visiting Senate delegation and Taki Assembly Executive Council issued joint call for calm amidst Taki Prime violence. But I don't know where they are exactly. But pro-Federation Adama assassinated by sniper fire while working in rice field in Lanoika Coast Monastery. So it looks like the Inebra cult, this is an Inebra cult assassination. So everything's just continuing to amp up. But the nice thing is, is that, uh, you know, this kind of violence is the kind of thing that causes everybody to be like, whoa, right? So, you know, we see calls for calm. Uh, as as the violence begins to ramp up. Um, hey, look! Angel Cartel carries out lightning raid on Fast Spera Five archaeological survey beat, uh, evading Amatar fleet response. So Angel Cartel has been raiding this air, uh, the Amatar for a little while now. All right, ceasefires are declared, agreements are made. Militias are opened up. Non-intervention treaty. That's the that's the agreement made between. Intaki Prime Federation authorities have increased the security status of Intaki system to point six and lifted the moratorium of the anchoring of capsular structures, despite continued violence and civil unrest on the planet of Intaki Prime. Kaldari has increased or has received notice of the status change. And the reauthorization of capsular structures rights under the ULI convention, but has expressed concern at the level of violence in populated centers on Antaki Prime. Civil disturbances and sporadic street fighting in Lenoika, largest city and cultural capital of Antaki Prime, has entered into their second week. While isolated incidents of violence has erupted in Navi Akat, the administrative capital and seat of the Antaki Assembly. A joint call for calm from the federal uh, visiting federal center. Delegation and the Executive Council of the Intaki Assembly appears to have fallen on deaf ears as a number of riots have taken place with shootings and bombings uh, adding to the lethal swirl of violence in the Intaki homeworld. Chief Counselor Vera Insolacio of the Intaki Assembly's executive has mobilized the Intaki militia to support the city's constabularies and planetary gender, gender arms in keeping peace. Federal Marines have been withdrawn to Kenta Yavat spaceport federal compounds, and naval installations across the planet following an urgent request by President Celis Agard by Senators Kalin Onthpad and Shalin Ramnev leading the Senate delegation's inspection tour. Jonas Ivestara, leader of the Intaki Autonomous Movement, is also reported to have begun talks with the main faction of the Free Intaki Army in an effort to halt attacks of the Federation personnel and property. So uh, Jonas is stepping in uh, on behalf of the Intaki Autonomous, which are, of course, very, he's been outspoken against this occupation, but is kind of working with the Free Intaki Army to try to de-escalate the radicals in an attempt to, like, come to a resolution. Um... <laughs> Sad day for this terrorist law lawful se separatist. Yeah. Um. Angel Cartel Raider strike targets on Flosis Wind 4 as Republic struggles with logistics of relieving planetary forces. That's kind of weird, too. Um. And this is like the beginning of Shadow War. So mostly talking about that. Um, or, well, no, that's the beginning of, uh, yeah. Concord powers, I trade in technology opportunities amidst isolated wars. Wait, did I miss, is this, hold on. 317. 
three, four. Yeah, no. Okay, so three days later. Uh, where was it? No? I guess it was here. This is just the treaty, though. Okay. Yeah, third day of relative calm on Antaki Prime as tentative peace holds following weeks of protests and riots. So this is, of course, three days later. So there was a call for calm. Everybody kind of stepped up, and there has been a bit of a ceasefire, it would seem. Antaki Assembly hires Algental Corps PMC to hunt Anibra assassination cells after rebuffing Mordu's Legion. So, Intaki Assembly, which again, loyal to the Kaldar, uh, to the Galente at this point, uh, according to uh, reports, didn't like want Mortis Legion's help and instead hires Algental Core. Intaki Autonomous Movement uh, demands Federation military leave Intaki Prime for lasting civil peace. So, these are the moderates. We'll call them that. Refugees flee destruction. Da, 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 da. Free Intaki Army Splinter Group ambushes Namatar elite mercenaries in western Akat foothills. Um, so, hold on. Who are Namatar elite mercenaries again? Let's see if we can figure that out. Persistent rumors claim that the Namatar elite private military corporation is a little more than a front for the Black Eagles, the Federation's most ruthless internal security and in intelligence agency. So it looks like like we, we know that the Akat Foothills has been a source of the uh, Serpentis stuff. So the question here is, is the Free Intaki Army, which has been getting supplies from the Deathless's crew and from the, and the Inebra cult, which are connected to the Serpentis, uh, is the Free Antaki Army actually defending the Serpentis' facilities here? That's a question. Uh, Verret Special Military District duties assigned to elite unit from Galente Police Directorate. Senator Shalene Romnev and Colin Omtad visit Lenoika Textile District to speak to community leaders. So this is, remember, the Textile District is where the, the heart of this conflict has been so far. That was where they built up the fortification and the Navy clashed with them just recently. Um, Grace's pirates steal shipment of biotechnology research tools in transit from republic to state. Mm. Serpentis inquest post records profits for military Samba implants and workload development divisions. And Krulifer organization, which is part of the Seckle clan, I think, right? An angel cartel peace treaty. In Inur, which is potentially uh, probably supported by the Deathless and Leopold and Valari. All right. Uh, Galente Federation Senate ratifies non intervention treaty with Amara Empire. Kaldari Navy stations in Syndicate region fully operational despite Garissus raids. Senate delegation in Taki returns to Valor to prepare a report for the situation on Taki Prime. Uh, Federation Navy Anchorage in, in Intaki system opens facilities as military traffic increases. Wave Corporation announces sponsorship of new Amari, blah, blah, blah. Suckle Clan Raiders repulsed by House Sorum fleets. Um, mass demonstrations in L Lanoika and Navat Navi Akat in Intaki Prime. Largely peaceful according to planetary gender arms. Good. Intaki Autonomous Division uh, demands elect.